let's look. All right, Connor Ben, Sam Vargas in in the UK. That's on next the Saturday on the tenth. Right. Uh, what do we know about Connor Ben? We know who his father is. Right. Uh, the Dark Destroyer, uh, Nigel. The ben. Dark Destroyer. I mean, a great, great fighter. Um, uh, uh, peaked in the nineties. Um, Wars with Chris Eubank. Yes. Um, is the subject of a very important boxing book called Dark Trade. Um, he the, there's a lot of written about that whole era in uh, in England, and so I just wanted to point out real quick. Do the Jeremy McClellan book. stuff? Yeah, G Mac. Yep. Uh, um. So what we we know about this kid? He's undefeated. Hasn't really fought anybody. What do we think of Samuel Vargas? I don't know. Um, I I think uh, yeah, it's I I, I don't think Connor Ben. He's a high energy fighter. Me too. Um, he's got a little pop. He's got pop. He's a well well trained. Um, again though, the sons of former fighters doesn't always bode well. Again, we talked about Tim Zhu before. Tim Zhu is appearing to be the exception. Let's see if Connor Ben is the same exception. Um, there's, a ver- there's a variety of reasons, so we can explain to people why. Usually these kids, because they're sons of famous fighters and great fighters, they didn't come up the way their parents did. And right. that hunger, when you lack that hunger, you got to be a sick maniac to, to be a fighter. And you, there are no stories of, oh, this wealthy kid became, a, this, this kid with a silver spoon became a fighter. There's all right. that. It, I it, don't. It, I know. I know that they tried to paint um, Chris Algieri as that, but they were they were way off. His father is like a super supervisor for the highway department. You know what I mean? I mean he, like, he's a Long Island guy, isn't he? Like, how yeah, is that? I mean, a, you can, yeah, you can be a rich Long Island guy, of course. You know, that's what. No, you know, no, but, I know. I of course. But, I mean, but you can be from the Hamptons, but there's right. there's, pro, there's projects in Long Island. Right, but I, and Chris isn't certainly Chris is a regular middle class kid, which there has been plenty of. Uh, just not necessarily in this country. If you go to other countries, plenty of middle class, you know, uh, folks will fight. But Chris is uh, again not to not to go down a Chris Algieri rabbit hole. But it's well, not like- to, to go down a Chris Algieri rabbit hole, I believe that Carl Frampton is him with. An Irish <laughs> they, accent. They look exactly alike. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. very creepy. Like, it's very creepy. It's, it's, but, it's bizarre. And Algeria yeah. is uh, is is Italian and Argentinian, and right. And uh, Frampton is not. He's n- Northern Irish. Um, but uh, but you know they again they tried to oh this you know guy from Long Island whatever, and it was like well, it's, you know it's not like Chris Algeria was getting driven to school in a nah, I mean bro he was still living at home with his parents like, right. after a, after in the basement. A big win yeah I mean, come right. on stop stop the madness right right, right. I, I like so, kind of Ben in that um yeah but we got to see it's it's a it's a Tim Zoo situation all over again repeat where is he at who is he fighting same amount of fights I believe right about 18 yeah, close. fights it, yeah yeah about that they're, they're both creeping up on 20 once you hit about sure. 20 what do you what do we want to see him do Either come here or fight a guy from here that we know. But at that weight class, doesn't even be got a guy from here. This real guy's at 40, right. 47, 54. Doesn't got to be from here. I don't want it to mean like we're saying it's only you. Sa- Sammy, Var- Sammy, Sammy Vargas has become a professional. Yes. So this is why they're making that fight. Let's be honest. Right. They protected Match- him for a while because of his story. And he right. got exposed pretty quickly. And he's an opponent. So let's be honest about it. Connor Ben should win. If he doesn't, it says a lot. If he does, let's see what he's got. Right. You gotta we 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 both agree that you don't move someone like they did with Vargas, Fernando Vargas. Fernando Not to Vargas, be confused right. with move guys too quick. Uh what uh, Francisco Panchito Bajado, see what happens moving too quick. Camacho right. Camacho's kid, you, you know, you put him in there, Jesse James Leia, maybe right. a little bit too quick, see what happens. Ah. Or maybe you're not exposing them. Maybe they just never had it. But for to right. Vargas, it was too quick for me. For Fernando and Tito Trinidad. That was uh, right. That a was monster. I, a monster. Tito Trinidad. And, and Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I, and I think that was the Garcias, because uh, that's who trained him. Was yeah. Garcia. Uh, that that camp. I think that was their earlier earlier forays into the boxing business where they did. yeah. I think they, they they had a juggernaut on their hands. Yeah, I think they they thought, okay, you know this this kid's incredible, which he was. Yeah, but we saw what happened. Um, all right, so we're both picking both picking Connor Ben. 
up next is another Philly fighter. That's right. Boots. Boots is special. So Boots is special. Sergey Lipinets can fight. Boots. Boots and it's a, ni- against, it's a against, nice fight against Sergey Lipinets. And Boots had a tough, tough go against Van Herdeen, Chris Van Herdeen in his last fight. Uh, there was a clash of heads, and Van Herdeen suffered a, what appeared to be a hatchet wound. Um, yeah, it wasn't the likes, pretty. The likes of John Duddy, um, and and they, they it was a no contest. So how disappointing because Boots was. Um, again, Boots Philly guy, another <laughs> that, long-standing Philly tradition of incredible fighters. Um, very, his style is very Philly too, which yeah. is um, he's a boxer puncher, um, and he's he does everything he's, really well. So he's he slick. Play. There's a lot of old, old subtle shit. There's a lot of you know a lot of parrying, uh, as yep. you like to say, a lot of catch and shoot. Um, they say they talk about the Floyd shoulder roll, but that's really Philly shit. Philly when shell. done, when done properly, the Philly right. shell, all of that stuff. You can see, um, yeah, you can so see that's a, that's a folks. That's a low guard with your chin behind your shoulder. Very hard to to do. And what you can do with that is what Vinny pointed out. You can you can catch or parry a shot and then punch back off of that. Very difficult to do. Very difficult to execute. Um, and it's hard to look good doing it. Very few. Many have tried, few have succeeded, um, and Boots seems to be well on his way um, to succeeding in this style. He's my, okay, guys, so this is my number one favorite young fighter right now uh, is, is Boots Ennis, and I, I really want you guys to, to do your homework on him, go on YouTube, watch his fights. Um, this kid is, he's special. He's He's what we need in boxing. He's got a great personality. He's flashy, but he's he's powerful. Um, I, I I don't know, I could go on and on about him. We talked about well, this guy. There, when you say special, there's these guys who just look effortless in there. Um, you know, when you see someone um, doing things on Instagram or YouTube with their uh, they're doing pad work or mitt work, et cetera, et cetera. Then you see them in the ring and you go, why doesn't he do any of that in the ring? He does none of it. Like a Brona. Right. Right, Brona right, throws right. 800 punches in a one minute video and throws six punches yeah, in, in the fight. Right. Boots and it's does in the ring what everyone does on their little Instagram videos. Right. It does, it's, he's responsible in there too. He's defensively responsible, yep. which is not something you see from someone who's got a little crack. He's not a devastating one punch guy. Uh, I, it might come, you know? Yeah. I, 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 Boots I'm, is I'm, special, man. I just yeah. wanted to say, you mentioned a lot of great Philly fighters when you were paying uh, homage to Marvin Hagler. Uh-huh. Boots is very much from that school of yeah. Willie the Worm, uh, that th- you see all of this in this kid, he's his ring IQ. He's wise beyond his years because yes. he's a kid. Yeah. Um, he he's a fighter's fighter. He is a boxing nerd's fighter, dream fighter. Sure, uh, sure. I mean, it's short punches, compact punches. Southpaw does this. Southpaw, <laughs> south. Paul South Jersey, doesn't, South Camden doesn't doesn't waste a lot of energy, economical, um, but not in a bad way, not in a right. way where you go, well, this guy's not moving his hands. Not like Brona, where you go, why don't you just move his hand? When he moves them, it's with intent to kill. Right. It's not to touch you or to score, it's to hurt you. But he's also well, very slick. You're mixing a lot of things in this kid, right. man. He's got you 20. Create- he's got t- 24 knockouts, 26 fights. Um, and I don't think that this is going to, this is going to go the distance. Um, I think, I think Lip, Lip is a great test though. I don't think he, I don't, I think he's a live guy. I don't think he wins, but I think it's great. Um, yeah. I Has Lip lost other than to Garcia? No. So Sergey Lip has one L and that's to Mikey Garcia. Was that at 35? 
or 40? I'm looking now. Um, if it was a 35, you can't even count. I mean, Mikey Garcia was, you're talking a top, you're talking a pound for pound guy, Mikey, at, at 26, 20, 26, 30, 35. That was the 40. Okay. So was, yeah, that was the 40. That was the in Texas. Um, and so he came back. He beat Lamont Peterson, Lippinets. He beat Eric Bonet. He, but in his last fight, he drew with Custio Clayton. I don't know who that is. Me neither. Yeah. So he's, a, he's a Canadian professional boxer um, who's undefeated. You know, and it's the one blemish on his record. Is, I mean, Lam- uh, you know, Lamont Peterson was a capable guy, you know, sure. former champion. So I, it's not what I'm saying is he's not a hobo is what I'm what I'm no, getting. Here. No, 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 no. Let's yeah, let's be perfectly clear. This is this is a this is a stiff test. Big fight. I mean, he got um, he got he got fucking washed when Mikey hit him. So is I, I don't know what is his chin brittle or did Mikey crack like that at 140 because he looked piss poor at 47 against no that was you you know that the Garcia fight was a decision that was he didn't he didn't stop him no you're thinking of um I know who you're thinking of that was uh that was uh Dejan uh, Zlatikan the guy he fell he fell into the ropes yes that was okay I'm sorry I'm sorry no no, that's all right yeah so Um, Sergey Lipinets has never been stopped no. No. Well, let me see. Sergey Lipinets is another former kickboxer guy. Let me just be to give you a quick, quick, brief bio. And then had a pretty good amateur career. And then, of course, at the pro ranks, he's just a tough customer. But does Boots think, stop him? Boots stops him. Boots if, Boots, him. if Boots stops Sergey Lipinets. <sighs> so now let me, let me bring this up. Another guy we talked about before. Now are Boots and Virgil Ortiz. They're around the same age. They're of the same ilk. They're the same weight. This could be potentially a, an incredible rivalry. Look, when uh, you and I were when you and I were kids, it's where it's headed. Now, they might not meet. To, they what are they? Ever. They're both the same age. They might be yeah. when they're thirty, with three yeah. L's. Um, you and I would love to see but, two but, undefeated. But Boots, Boots is my favorite. This is this is my pick, guys, for the next guy that you you're reading about. Um, which now I probably jinx them. Um, I'm, I'm having a hard time arguing with that. I love that kid, Brandon Lee. Oh yeah, he's good. Too. Yeah, he's he's um, fantastic. But uh, but but I to admit to the eye test, Boots can be great. I don't know that about Brandon Lee yet. I just like watching him. Right. He's so there's a different there's a difference between keep an eye out on this kid. He's mad fun to watch, and this kid is special. This kid right. could be a special fighter. Jerron Boots Ennis, it's not just because I'm from Philly, because B loves him and he's B's favorite prospect. Him. He's my favorite, uh, favorite prospect. He might be my favorite fighter right now. Oh, uh, that's 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 heavy praise. I, I, lo- I love this kid. I love I him. love Boots too, man. Um, so I want you guys to, so moving if he on, stops, if he's oh, before sorry, if, if he stops him, bro, that is a statement, Victor. Yeah. This beating is, him, beating him is a, a very good victory. A, a UD, a, a wash, that's a very solid victory over a tough customer. If he if he catches that fade, that's a that's a yo. I'm ready for whoever at forty. Right. To in my opinion. Right. I th- well, I th- again, maybe we start moving these guys a little faster, and you know they won't. But you yeah. know maybe it's time to move these guys a little faster. But again, um, see, guys, I, tune in. That's uh that's next Saturday, the tenth, and that's they're fighting that in Uncasville, Connecticut, at the Mohegan Sun. I'm seeing like, what's next, so I know you're horny. Yeah. Up next mm-hmm. on the tenth from Tulsa, Oklahoma, live from Shirley, Long Island, the uh. great Joe Smith Jr. Jr. Joe Smith mm-hmm. Jr. versus Maxim Blasov. For the vacant WBO light heavyweight title, that would make Joe our fourth, fourth world title holder. As um, my nephew once said, it's for the vacant. Vacant? Yeah. <laughs> so Joe, uh, if let me just give you a quick background. Joe Smith, he um, ended Bernard Hopkins' career 
This is uh, as, this as, is utterly as this we know is it, disrespectful. He I'm punched, not going to sit he here and punch to this Bernard Hopkins out of the ring. All right, that's how that's how incredible Joe Smith. Would you Smith mind? Is. Would you mind telling the listeners how old Bernard was when that happened? I, it doesn't matter. Age ain't nothing but a number. Um, mm-hmm. And Bernard Hopkins is an alien. He doesn't age. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, mm-hmm. Bernard Hopkins himself told us that. Mm-hmm. Joe, mm-hmm. However, um, has the the hands of God himself, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and he, he punched. He did. To, he did to Bernard Hopkins what no man has ever done, mm-hmm. and that is, he retired him the right way. Mm-hmm. By, by mm-hmm. literally punching him out. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. <laughs> All right, guys. I, I'm, I'm for the most part kidding around. Uh, we got Joe Smith Jr., Maxim Vlasov. Uh, I don't think either one of these guys are the best light heavyweights in the world. However, Joe Smith Jr. Uh, has surprised everyone um, with performances at light heavyweight. Uh, he also has grenades in his hands. So, I, as, and I'm joking around too. I like Joe. Yeah, yeah Joe, um, you can't you can't not like Joe. I was workman like uh, work I, I, construction. I, I still does he. Uh-huh. So Joe Smith with his winnings, he bought a tree trimming company, and he, their tagline is "We knock out the competition." Well, of course so, it is. Yeah. What it's, What it's else would it be? Right. So, uh, it, by the way, if you're in the Suffolk County area, oh, and, here we go. You know, you need if you're in Port, if you're in Port Jefferson, and you need, <laughs> you need your trees trimmed. Call, is Roosevelt? Uh, is Roosevelt Suffolk County? No, that's in Nessa. Okay. That's in Nessa. I live in Nessa, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so he lives. <sighs> Joe Joe lives out east, uh, which. Not too far, actually, from Jamel Herring, where Jamel Herring grew up in Gordon Heights, Corum area. Uh, Joe Smith is from Shirley, which is really starting to birth some some fighters. There's uh, both MMA and boxing. Um, there's quite a bit of fighters coming out of that area. It's a tough, it's a tough area, tough neighborhoods. Um, however, he's fighting a tough guy in Maxim Vlasov. This is not a gimme. Um, Joe has been susceptible to. Uh, twice in his career he got his chin broke his jaw broken uh and those were um in both fights he lost uh, he can be hit he can be hit he's there to be hit guys he, D- joe's not uh oh no he, also gonna... beat, he also beat jesse hart too jesse hart's a philly fighter right uh, this is very disrespectful he there's a joe's... very disrespectful segment <laughs> J- J- joe joe's i gave high praise to philadelphia in my last uh pre well yeah, yeah you set it up yeah it's you're playing you're turning heel now you went mr this, perfect on this me. this is my this is my official heel turn on you were working Michael baby Boston. face and then turn heel <laughs> after you got all the philly listeners hype <laughs> just just to mock us and and we even talked about joey dueco you know another my, we did player. who i love my mother sees jesse hart uh, and his father at the at the uh, shop right all the time, Does grocery she, shopping. T- t- ask her to ask him about Joe Smith Jr. Uh, yeah, uh, how dare you? How dare you? Well, no, what do we like? Who do we like? We we both like Joe in that fight. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go with Joe. Uh, I'm picking Joe. I think uh, I think Vlasov's a bit past it. He's 34. Um, I uh, he's been in tough a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, he lost. He lost to Glowacki. Glowacki. Yeah, yeah. Who Glavaki, we spoke about? Yeah, Glowacki. Who we, again? You got to reference uh, Vinny as the greatest last name pr- pr- pronouncer. Of That's all not true. It's not true. Yeah, it's not um, true. But uh, I, I think it's going to be a good fight. I think it's a fun TV fight. Joe's not in boring fights. Um, his only losses are two broken jaws, one early in his career. Um. And one to, uh, oh Jesus, I'm losing my mind here. What's the Cuban guy's name that lost to Bavol? Oh, uh, Sullivan Barrera. Sully B. Yeah, Sullivan Sul- yeah. Sul- Barrera. And, yeah. and Joe, Joe lost to Dimitri Bavol. Yeah. Uh, so, again. Um, hey, look, tough guys. Tough guys. Both of them. Tough um, guys. I-, I could see Joe maybe stopping him late. Uh, I think that's okay. what I'm going, eight or nine. Yeah, I think I think Joe puts in the investment. What I mean by that is the body work in the beginning. Uh, he goes up top uh, in 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 the later mid late rounds, and I think we get a stoppage. And I think Joe becomes the fourth uh, champion 
world champion. As a, as a callback, we did not discuss the Better BF fight in detail that was in Russia. Oh. Um, and the reason I want to um, bring it up is because apparently after Better BF did his work, which was a knockout because he's the Terminator, whoever wins this fight, they're on a collision course with Better BF. That's going to be um, fun. Fireworks. You have Joe Smith Jr. and Artur Better Biev. Look, man, <laughs> you're talking about uh, you're talking about uh, the sound and the fury. Yeah, this is. You know, I don't. If, I, 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 if that fight gets made, get your popcorn and get it. Um, quick and, and don't get up to go to the bathroom. If if Joe wins, it, it's getting made, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, no one has to cross the street. It's it's. It's, it seems like low hanging fruit. So right. we could look for that in what, maybe late summer, maybe September. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I'm thinking. Yeah. Either. Yeah. That's a, that's a good September fight. There's that, that, you know, before the world series where they put on a bunch of fights, usually the month before uh, yeah. baseball, baseball playoffs start. Knock them out the box, Knock them out. Knock them out the box, Knock them out the box, Knock them out the box,